What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and you might know me from my award-winning series of audiobooks, How to Be a Good Parent, The Life and Times of a YouTube Vlogger. But I also do video game reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap that'll probably get demonetized anyway. And today I'm taking a look at Project Cars 2. And of course, it is the second in the series of racing titles from Slightly Mad Studios, hence the two in the title. So let's see if Slightly Mad went back to basics and corrected some of the issues from the original game and brought us something bigger, badder, and bolder. Or is it the racing equivalent of Kickboxer 2, just riding away on the power of its namesake? Let's find out and see, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Project Cars 2. A world afraid of shadows, Domio Gato Mr. Roboto, and look ma, no headlights. Graphics are at first. The first thing I want to stress is this is with the day one patch, and Project Cars is still pretty much as much of a dichotomy as you could ever see in a single video game. First, the good. When you're coming down through a tight stretch in Le Mans, let's say, in your damned pickup just because y'all thought it'd be cool to race that track with a truck, the game can actually look amazing and with tons of lighting and weather combination. The game's randomness is really actually a sight to see and something really fun to experience. One time you're ripping across the track at 12 a.m. and boom, you crack your headlights. And let me tell you, there are a few things as sphincter tightening as realizing you have five miles left in a race and the only thing you have for illumination is the burning red hot metal from your friggin' brakes. It is epic stuff. Also, the damage system continues to be excellent, beating out many other titles with ever progressing levels of just utter anarchy delivered onto your poor metal steed as the race progresses. Hoods fly off, entire sides warp and crinkle up, and bits hang off with some excellent particle effects from sparks and so forth. And what I really like is that feeling of progression to the damage, which is just a little bit higher here than it is in some other titles. And speaking of particle effects, let's talk about the weather in a second. In all areas but one, this is outstanding. For example, when the rain is coming down like Noah got a message the rest of us didn't understand, it is fantastic and actually is truly hard to see through. Not in that, oh, you know what, we have a graphical effect we want to flash in your face like developers when they first learned what friggin' lens flare was, but in a true rain way where you can just sort of make out far off shapes and you think, hey, you know what? Squinting will probably somehow magically help me see farther. And while not really eclipsing the excellence of let's say Drive Club and its water effects, I'd say in some elements, it's close to the Forza series, which I really didn't feel that Project Cars was originally. To me, the best part though, has to be the cloud of vapor and just crash inducing water that sprays off cars when you're going fast enough to be able to North Korean rocket and you're behind four other cars and the amount of water sent up into the air not only looks incredible, but actually in real gameplay against other players, that can be used for your advantage. And the fact that there are so many factors, including time of day, how fast you go from one weather to the next, it means you have races that can go deep into the night, back into the next day and change from rain to snow, back to a mix of high winds and just overall fog, all in one race. It's not the first game to do this, but it's the largest series of options I feel, and it just feels more impactful than some other games have. Also, it's great to see so many new cars in Project Cars 2, and while it's hard to pick my favorite, the sheer number is impressive compared to the original. It's not up to the level of other titles, I would say. It's also the second game from this team, though, so it's pretty good stuff and a vast improvement, with some manufacturers that were noticeably absent from the last title now showing up here. At the same time, their texture work and model complexity isn't much increased from the original, but it still holds up pretty well. Sadly, all this is mired in a number of odd little issues. I am not sure what I was expecting, but in all manner and shape, I was expecting a bit more. Even after the day one patch, the game simply has some issues in many places. First, it's gotta be the first game that's just completely afraid of its own shadows, blinking them in and out of existence on cars, mountain buildings, and foliage at all time. It's a constant flickering mess with some of the worst shadow LOD I think I've seen in a game. Add to the fact that while racing, you will see your opponent's back windows flickering between the very base unreflective LOD and a more detailed glass-like LOD hundreds of times in a single race, and it can actually look pretty ugly. Now this magnifies a particular issue that the game has with its fog and snow effects as well in particular, and this results in sometimes in replays seeing just a bunch of windshields far off in the distance or rims or bumpers. It's like there's an error of some kind in the LOD that's really impacting the way the game handles its effects, and this is by turning all the effects on or off and doing all different kinds of experimentation, it still showed up. But there's also an occasional odd frame pacing that you'll see in some of the video here, resulting in what looks like FPS drops that are really just frames being delivered willy-nilly, like the damn graphics engines debating whether to work or not. While the PS4 and Pro don't have work in HDR, the Xbox One does. So if that matters to you, that's pretty much the only way you're going to see it. And lastly, I'd love to talk about PC performance, but I couldn't even get that working on the PC for this review. So for now, consoles are where it's at. And honestly, it's a decidedly mixed bag, especially in such a contested field. 
Now, I expect a number of these glitches can be brute forced away with the PC version, but who knows until we see it. Sound, music, and voice. One right. You know what? Let's do sound first. You know, Project Cars was never really a slouch, but I had a couple issues with mixing and leveling. That seems to be almost gone here. And bravo to these guys for some of their impact sounds. It's nice to hear sounds when a car crashes, like a bunch of pissed off accordions on a race to Armageddon, where they crash and you can hear this breaking and splintering of different metals. It's really good stuff. That's what you really want, the discrete levels of sound. And the more you have, the more that fiction that a car is made up of true materials and not just polygons with sounds attached to them, the better. This results in some really wicked crashes where a spin out in front of you can send glass breaking sounds all around you. And for just a brief second, you'll be like, oh my God, I got to watch out for my tires. Now, I would love to see more racing games hit this as I don't really feel that they seem to understand the subtlety that can be applied. And it sounds like somebody just kicking over a bunch of Campbell's soup cans. Now, when it comes to the different cars and views, they're mixed adequately, though I think some people want to fiddle with them a little bit to sort of dial them in just for you. And while I was never unhappy with the original car sounds for the most part, these new ones are sampled incredibly well from deep droning of huge horsepower behemoths down to the little fasty zippy little engines that could with their speed in disguise. I like that. Very cool different sounds for all of the different levels of engine here. Music. Well, most of the music is just in the menus, and that, of course, is a choice that many racing fans are going to truly appreciate. I have to say, when it does play, I actually really like it. It's got that celestial feel with soaring vocals and that, hey, let's everyone drive in a circle for 500 laps, like religious fervor that many of us recognize if we have a friend who's been bitten by the beast with four barrels. It's epic, it's big, and it perfectly fits, and it plays pretty much when you would expect it to. Voice. So this is pretty much the typical voiceovers with snippets from drivers who sound like they had one too many puffs at the Magic Dragon before somebody sat them down and said, hey, you know what, tell us about racing. All kidding aside, it's fitting and it works well and never really feels too forced, but overall, nothing too special to talk about. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. And really, there's not much story here. Project Cars is like most racing games, offering you a smattering of different modes, a hugely increased car count to 180 plus and almost one and a half times as many total track layouts. But the beauty at times to me is in how Project Cars mends it all together. Take, for example, the career mode. Here you get a choice of various disciplines, and that means that there's some very real flexibility to the career mode, allowing you to feel like you actually, you know, sort of sculpted a career versus driving a series of events some random race god made the day before you showed up. And while online is the typical lobby style system, they've also now added filters here, so you can make sure that you don't connect to that one asshat that treats every opponent like a midway pinball machine. And you have other filters as well that allow for a bit more tailoring of your online experience and, of course, a bit more comfort in your experiences overall. Now, other than a test track kind of setup, you also have an offline mode, and this allows you to race against the AI in the same class, identical cars, or choosing up to four other classes to race against. Because, you know what, everyone wants to see who would win Le Mans, a pickup truck or that 1,000 horsepower missile with wheels that some scientist built in his laboratory of scary things. Or you can easily jump off into Rallycross and see how well those skills you picked up driving that BMW translate to gravel and dirt. The excellence of execution in Project Cars 2 is really the far more dynamic feel to everything. Take, for example, the weather systems themselves, which, while building on the original game, turns it up to 11, then paints a dial with just 11s on it and turns that up. Not only can you choose various time patterns, weather patterns, but you can also choose seasons, which subtly affect all the choices. But now the developers have combined the dynamic weather with the tracks, meaning you might have started on a dry firestone track and then a while later a downpour floods corners three through 1000 with hydroplaning vehicles as everyone realizes, you know what, maybe it's the best thing not to do tight corners in the equivalent of wrinkle wall slicks. Now this can alter your pit strategy as well, which has you taking control and sort of altering settings on the car and of course tires. This can happen two to three times in a race if you crank the laps up and the length up and I love that feeling. There's actually something very real about the description of a living racetrack here and while sure it's a heaping heavy amount of hyperbole to the utmost degree, it's also pretty satisfying to make that shift mid-race and see your lap times getting shorter and shorter because it means that not only racing makes for accomplished racers but also planning and strategy behind and not behind the wheel. But none of that would really matter if the driving system didn't work. 
Now, first, you can drive with a gamepad. Scratch that. You can actually drive well with a gamepad. And while not endowed with the same level of fidelity a steering wheel would have, but many folks out there don't want to throw down a couple hundred on a steering wheel. And let's be honest, Project Cars 1 was notorious for controlling like a barrel with some donut tires screwed to it when it came to gamepad racing. That is much improved here with a little fiddling you can usually dial it somewhat in. When it comes to force feedback on the steering wheels, I would say it's good, but not really great. And it did require more fiddling than some other racers to really get it right. I have to say this, getting behind the wheel of cars, both new and old is improved from the original. That's for sure. There's far more feedback to the player than there ever was in Project Cars 1, and it's almost instantly noticeable. Even if you race with the various assists on, there's still a good tangible feeling of difference between a 500 horsepower rocket sled, where turns are pretty much a suggestion, and that street racer that comes out of corners at 12 Gs and costs about 10 times that. Sadly, here too are where a couple problems crop up. Despite being improved from the original, the cars still never have the de facto punch and feel and weight that other premier racers have on the consoles and all the platforms as a whole. And that's even after switching to the raw output for force feedback and steering. There is always this little imperceptible feel of translation occurring that doesn't show up in other races in the genre. A good racing engine really needs to make the natural differences between all the cars tangible to the player. That way, the other systems like weather and track make even more of a difference when they change. Don't get me wrong, it's not terrible at all, but I won't lie, it's a little bit noticeable compared to, say, some other games. Also on console, dear God, the loading times are long. Welcome to the loading for loading loading screen. You know what? I could probably play some Pillars of Eternity between level loads, and they climb up to some pretty hefty lengths if you mix various cars in a track. Lastly, the AI. Let's talk a little bit about this. While it's improved and able to be set both via skill and aggression, their robotic-like nature has stuck to Project Cars 2 like Project Cars 1. And what's really sad is this is actually visually noticeable because a lot of times in corners, they will do this strange, almost digital gamepad replication where you can see them trying to stick perfectly to the corner. It doesn't look good, and it indicates they have a very real issue they need to figure out. Now, this is regardless of any settings all the way down and all the way up. It always happened no matter what settings I put this on. Now, they raced fine and they offered a huge challenge. Don't get me wrong. It's just that sometimes they looked re damn ridiculous. And that's an utter shame, especially when you look at some of the other improvements here. And of course, that brings us all to fun factor. There is a lot of fun to be had here. There's a great amount and it's a blast at times. And the game is pretty goddamn big, if not its career mode, just the fundamental flexibility there and allow you to really change things around so it feels living and breathing. But honestly, the increase in cars, the dynamic race locations were beat out by the poor reacting AI, the odd graphical bugs, and the basic feeling that no matter what car I drove, it wasn't ever necessarily perfectly aligned with what it should have felt like. There's a tactile feeling that matters in racing games, and in many ways, Project Cars shoved a ton of improvement into this title, but they didn't quite hit it perfectly off on that point. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale with deep, deep sale replacing rent if it's a PC title. This is actually a wait for a sale. I do like a lot of the elements here, but this is a contested field right now with a ton of different racing games out there. And many of them feel a little bit better or perform a little bit better. And I feel that with a couple patches, we could certainly see that here. But honestly, right now, I think waiting for a sale is probably the best bet. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.